Hello all, here are OS reviews you're watching our throwback look at the Motorola Spice here in 2018. This was an Android smartphone released at the tail end of 2010, and one of the reasons why it's kind of interesting is A, this was a phone that we never saw in the US officially because it wasn't released through a carrier, so you can only find it unlocked, and B, it's basically a Motorola Citrus, which was released as a super low-cost phone that you can find on Verizon prepaid for about $60, except it has a Side out QWERTY keyboard, which actually makes it a very interesting device uh, since at the time there weren't many Android phones that came with this particular style. Of course, now we have a lot of BlackBerry phones like the BlackBerry Priv, for instance, that has this slide out design, but the overall form factor makes it really similar to something like the Palm Pre, also with this vertical slider and about the same in terms of the overall screen size as you can see here. So the Spice was still meant as kind of a mid-end, entry-level smartphone even when it was released, and it had a Snapdragon S1 processor, which is capable of 1 gigahertz. However, it was underclocked to 528 megahertz, which was a little disappointing. It meant that sometimes navigation was a little bit sluggish, as you can see here. You can see that animations jump around. It wasn't really the fastest phone even back in its day. It also used the Moto Blur UI, which was also found on other devices around 2010-2011 from Motorola, such as the Motorola Spice here that also comes with a keyboard but not a form factor that slides out along with devices like the Motorola Backtrack uh, that we also saw here in the US. So taking a quick look at the hardware first, we have a 3-inch display on the front. It's capacitive, supports multi-touch. There's no front-facing camera, so there's no video chatting. Selfies really w weren't a thing back then. There's also a earpiece, proximity light sensor, and down below we have four capacitive keys taking us to the menu, home, back, and search. And sliding it up, of course, we have a four-row QWERTY keyboard, which actually is one of the better keyboards that Motorola designed. It's tactile, it's responsive, the keys are large, they're backlit, and they're better than on the Motorola Charm because these were a lot more squished together versus this one, which has a more BlackBerry-like style to it. On the edge, we have access to a micro USB port for charging, and on the very top, there's a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, a power on off switch, a volume rocker, and on the back, a very interesting backtrack touchpad. It allowed you to control the device without touching the display itself, which was kind of useful if you are just, let's say, uh, typing something out with the keyboard, you don't want to reach your thumbs all the way up to the screen, you can simply just swipe it on the back for it to move a virtual cursor around, which I'll show you in a second. There's also a 3 megapixel camera camera on the back, which is pretty bad even back then, so the camera quality was not a highlight of this phone. There's also a rear-facing speaker that was quite distorted, but it does have a pretty loud overall volume. So design-wise, it's very cute, it's very pebble-like, it's made entirely out of plastic, so no really high-end materials, but it feels quite ergonomic like the Palm Pre, and has a very similar design with that vertical slider. Taking a quick look at the software next, it's basically running on Android 2.1 Eclair underneath the Moto Blur skin. And we still see many familiar design elements of Android, but of course it's a very outdated version by now. Essentially what Moto Blur tried to do was consolidate all of your social messaging services into one always updating package. What I mean by that is that you can use Moto Blur to sign in with your Twitter, with your Facebook, MySpace back in the day, all of those things, including email, and it would always populate in the same page as they rolled along. Taking a quick look at the backtrack touchpad first, there is a widget on the side here that I can tap on to turn this function back on, and now I can just simply swipe along the back here to basically navigate the pages without having to touch the display. If I'm in a longer list, I can also scroll up and down like so, uh, which is actually kind of handy, especially if you're browsing the web. Since the screen is kind of small at only three inches, having this on the back actually does uh, kind of help. It was a unique, innovative idea from Motorola back then, also found on the charm, as you can see here. What I can also do is double tap on the backtrack to bring up this virtual cursor and I can move this around. It's a little bit jumpy, hard to precisely move around the first time you use it, but you can get the hang of it. And from here I can now swipe on and select very specific things uh, if I want to go into something like a calendar for instance or a calculator to type out smaller text and smaller details. So that's something that you can do with the backtrack. Other elements of the smartphone include Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth. It's a pretty 
uh, typical in that sense, um, except for the fact that, again, it has only a single core 528 megahertz processor, which is definitely on the sluggish side, especially now in 2018. It just feels very slow if you try to open up more than three or four apps. So let's take a quick look at the camera. So as aforementioned, camera performance was never really a highlight of this uh, device and it has the same megapixel count as the Motorola Citrus. Uh, again, the Citrus is basically the exact same phone as the Spice minus the keyboard, making it slightly less compelling in my opinion. Uh, it was also made out of more recycled eco materials, I believe, and a lot of reviewers at the time said that they felt very cheap and plasticky coupled with a kind of slow performance made it a not very desirable Android smartphone. Uh, with that being said, I think the Spice is a little bit better just because it has more hardware features built in and it's a cleaner install of Android as well because this is an unlocked model so it doesn't have any of the bloatware that we saw on the uh, Motorola Citrus which had a lot of Verizon apps, there was a lot of Microsoft apps as well for whatever reason. At the very least it is an autofocus camera and the field of view is actually decent. You can see that it's, it's not capturing the object in a super zoomed in view. Uh, oftentimes with super budget phones you'll find that you have to stand very far away from objects to capture the entire shot. So the angle of the camera here actually seems to be doing a decent job at that. The display seems to do an okay job for a budget phone of its time although it doesn't get quite as bright as what I would like to see. It's also not an IPS panel so even though it looks fine from the left and the right if you tilt it downwards like this you can see how the color starts to fade uh, pretty dramatically. Alright so we've connected to Wi-Fi we're gonna try launching into the browser and seeing if anything will load. But at last, it seems that we have loaded the page, and again, we have pinched a zoom, but it's a little jumpy just because of the slow processor here. Now, one thing I do like about the uh, device here is that the text entry is actually pretty easy just because you can also long hold, and it comes up with a magnifying glass of where your cursor is so that you can more precisely know where you are and then type away and make corrections using the QWERTY keyboard, which, as aforementioned, is really good just because it's tactile. I found the size to be actually very pleasant for a relatively compact phone, and the form factor just feels quite comfortable when you're typing along as well. One thing the Motorola Spice does really well is search. You can tap on this icon here just to quickly do a very quick search through all your apps as well as web content. But more importantly, you can just slide out the keyboard and start typing away and that instantly brings through the universal search. Command wise, there are a few special controls that you've probably forgotten about since the early days of Android. And revisiting them, I can double tap on the home key to switch back into the previously open application. And I can also long hold on the home key to basically multitask between currently open apps. So this is not a very pretty visualization. It's not like we have a deck of cards that we can flick through like on modern Android or in the case of the Palm Pre since 10 years ago, but at least it does work. Otherwise, taking a quick look at some of the preloaded apps on the uh, Motorola Spice here, there is an AccuWeather, there's also a trial version of Assassin's Creed, Brain Challenge 2, so some basic games on here. Uh, there's also access to a few Motorola-specific apps. Facebook is preloaded along with Google Marketplace, Google Gmail, Google Maps for navigation, and Quick Office for quickly editing Excel, Word, and PowerPoints when on the fly, which actually does make sense with this pretty good QWERTY keyboard. It's actually quite good for productivity and for things like email. There's also th something called WeWorld, which is really the only other bloatware, so to speak. It's Actually, not a trial version, but it's this very cute uh, little app where you're able to doodle and create cartoon-like characters customizing the background as well as your person, and then just uh, basically creating these avatars that you can interact with and save. So that's a kind of a strange thing to provide here, but it speaks to how Motorola were trying to go for a younger audience, both kids and teens, who probably wanted a lower-end device with a good keyboard for social messaging. Otherwise, the apps, as far as new content is concerned, is not really supported all that well. Uh, the marketplace is very out of date, but you can still find a handful of apps, uh, or at least older versions of apps, that will work. You can always try APKs by Googling them and then sideloading them using a memory card, and that tends to work as well. It's just performance is not going to be outstanding, just because, again, the processor is quite slow, even though it does have Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth. So that's more or less it as far as our revisited quick look at the Motorola Spice. To be honest, this is a phone that many of you probably have never heard of, which is part of the reason why I wanted to quickly do this video now. It just shows how, uh, again, Motorola really tried to innovate with the form factors of their smartphones back in the early 2000s. With devices like the Spice, the Backtrack, which had this flip-out keyboard, it's a lot of a clever experimentation and innovation that, in a way, I would like to see return to Android phones. Memory, speed, specs are kind of the only things that are getting the most attention these days, but I think that with good hardware design and a unique outlook, it can definitely make the overall experience feel fresh and feel different as well. 
Thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This has been the throwback of the interesting vertically sliding Android phone, the Motorola Spice.